Hey guys, another week, another opening clinic, another chance for me to work on my verbal cadence and for all of us to hopefully work on our chess opening. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the questions. Dan Otello is saying, Hi Jan, I want to play the headshock against the English, but white can avoid it by playing 1c4, knight f6, 2g3. I'm studying c4, knight f6, g3, c6, bishop g2, d5, knight f3, dc, castles, knight bd7, queen c2, knight b6, a4, a5, knight a3, bishop b6, knight e5. And here comes my question. What is your opinion on 9h5? Does it give black equality? By the way, can you recommend some other interesting responses to anti headshot move order? For example, reverse Botvin except c4, c5 instead of knight f6, g3, knight c6, and responding knight f3 with e5. Um, all right, we're gonna need a chessboard. I have some opinions, I'm not sure how valid they will be. 1c4. Knight f6. Our friend Donatello wants to play the head shock, um, which I guess means he wants something like knight c3, c5, knight f3, e6, g3, b6, then bishop g2, bishop b7, and it does bother him that after 2, g3, sorry, c4, knight f6, g3, White is first to occupy this diagonal, so it's going to be hard to play the headshot, which is correct. You can't go b6 and e6, bishop g2. There also won't be a bishop here. Therefore, he's studying c6, which is a very logical reply to this move order. Just saying, you know, if this bishop comes here, I'll block it with c6, d5. Bishop g2, d5, knight f3, d takes c4. And this is one of the more complicated lines out there, especially if black decides to try to hang on to the pawn short castles, knight bd7 is the main line, queen to c2, knight to b6. Now white has a choice between going a4, which Dantel mentioned, and the immediate knight to a3, which yeah, lead, lead to similar positions, but I think they have some differences as well. So a4, threatening a5, black goes a5, stopping a5, knight to a3, and here Dantello asked about the greedy move, bishop to e6. There are alternatives like g6, is, especially here with a4, a5, always an option, you know, just giving the pawn back and trying to play more quietly. I believe this is considered to be more or less decent as well. Well, bishop e6 leads to a lot sharper lines. Dantello mentioned knight e5. I'm not quite sure what the status in knight g5 is either. It's some crazy positions like bishop g4, knight c4, bishop e2, knight e5, bishop h5, what do they do, rook e1, knight bd7, d4, stuff like that. Very, very messy and would have to be checked carefully as well, both with a4, a5 included and without. But after knight e5, he's mentioning the move pawn to h5, which I think is decent. It's a bit strange that with action looming on the queen side, action looming well, <clears throat> and black having been so dedicated to defend that pawn that now he switches to just going h5, h4. But it does seem to work, and there is the logical argument the knight abandoned the king side, yada, yada, yada. It does seem to work. h4 seems like an obvious choice trying to stop this pawn in its tracks, but black can continue very aggressively with knight to g4 when yeah i couldn't find any advantage for white there's some very strange lines like if white takes we take takes and go g5 with mess h takes g h4 queen c3 i think rook h7 don't ask me why these moves are played it's a move by move position and the computer says it's fine rook h7 i guess to support some bishop g7 in some positions and it does, did seem like black was doing all right. So h4, knight g4, that was also d4. Um, sorry. With more messes, knight e5, d e g6. But overall, as I said, yeah, I couldn't find anything too tempting for white. And it does seem like this is a playable move. After h5, there's also, very logical, just knight takes c4 
one we take and go h4. Once again, seems decent. I'm never that convinced that you can really mate on the h-file in such positions, but black has managed to activate this rook without having to move it or castling or anything, so that counts for something. And now my computer says just, you know, playing it more or less solidly with bishop to d5 is fine, e4 takes, it's one of the options, queen takes c4, e5, with, yeah, I guess a roughly equal position. Well, white has the two bishops, but he always has the slightly unsafe king. And it does seem like black should be doing more or less all right. Not forced, but yeah, those are some sample lines that illustrate that h5 appears to be playable. As I said, I'm not sure about the status in the other line with his knight to g5 business, but if he can make that work, it's probably a fairly playable complex. And if not, there's always the option to bail out with g6 here. Your opponent looks very aggressive on that particular day. Same here after knight a3, there is g6. And black has been has been holding these positions recently. So there was there was the g3 c6 line. He also asked about c4 c5, which of course you can do. It opens a different can of worms. Normally, yeah, you have to be ready for the system. I always endorse with yeah, going for d4 here. And these, what do they call them, symmetrical Englishes. Well, you can play with g6, you can play knight f6, you can play e5, you can do all kinds of things. But there's no real shortcuts. Like if you want to play the headshock and then you want a backup system, if they try to move already with c4, knight f6, g3, I do believe that it's sensible what you thought to go c6, d5, which is a more contained system than going c4, c5 and having to deal with... Ah, you probably would argue that here you can play this. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what headshot players can do and what they can't do. After knight c3, I guess you can play knight f6, and if g3, then e6. When your point is knight f3, b6, and bishop g2, d5 is fine for black. So once the knight commits to c3, you can probably get back to the headshot, but you still have to live with 2g3. And here, yeah, you can play these symmetrical lines with g6, whatever. <laughs> Bishop g2, bishop g7, knight c3, knight c6. And after knight f3, you mentioned e5. There's also other lines here, like I've always been fond of this d6, followed by bishop f5, intending queen d7, bishop a3 system, for example. So there's certainly different lines one can play here. e6, also a decent move as far as I know. But none of those are really shortcuts. So I believe that your, c your c6, d5 system, especially if you like these sharp positions, like the one after h5, Seems to be going down a decent road. But in the symmetrical English, all the lines are very playable as well. The reverse board vinic you mentioned, and the ones I just put on the board. So best of luck battling those, what do we call these people? Fianketeers? In the future, thanks Danotello. Oi Bade is also a Fianketeer, word I just made up, but a very different one. He's saying, Hi Jan, what do you think of the e4, 1 e4 c5 2 b3 Sicilian? Do you think it could be used as a main weapon against the Sicilian as white? Do you happen to know a refutation in this line as black? Thank you so much. Refutation is strong, but I never knew what white should do against 2 g6, which I think is at the highest level currently is the main move. So with my limited knowledge, I would say, no, it's not great and it shouldn't be used as a main weapon against the Sicilian because this 2g6 is nasty. And I'm aware Kramnik played it in some rapid games and there's some strong players like Andre Keen, I think Morozevic, that sometimes, yeah, try their hand at this 2b3. But uh, yeah, it still seems to me like it's more of a surprise weapon and once again, limited knowledge, but I believe that g6 is a bit of a problem. The other lines, whatever, knight c6, bishop b2, d6, I think is the most popular setup, but here after bishop b5, it seems like the white position is quite playable. But once again, this move is good. What do you do? Bishop b2, knight to f6, and it's hard for white to get anything going. The main line by far is the move e5, knight to d5, and the point is that e6 is very well met here by f6, when, yeah, 
If anybody's better, it's black after e takes d, bishop d7, or queen takes d7, followed by overtaking the center. So e6 no good. And in this position, they've been stuck. They've tried different things, whether h4 is interesting, bishop g7, h5, knight c6. But yeah, a bit hard to believe this can be great for white. They've tried, I think, knight c3, knight takes, bishop takes. This is a recent game. Andre King against MVL, I think, h4 here. Then we have sacrificed a pawn, d5, ed castle, and got a good position. And so on and so forth. There's other tries. Queen f3, uh, I believe, is what Morozovic might have done. But in general, there's nothing great for white. Queen f3, knight b4, once again, it seems like black is doing pretty okay. And yeah. Since that problem is fairly known, and as I said, this is the main line at the top level, this 2g6 move has been recommended, I think, by uh, in this Experts versus the Sicilian book in the old days. So, yeah, one, if you don't have a workaround around that, I wouldn't go to b3 on a regular basis. And once again, I don't know one. I think d4 is another move when black has to know queen a5 check. But if they do, once again, we're not getting very far. So this is, yeah, the system that I know as black and that I was always happy to play in my rare outings with 1c5. And the reason why I'm surprised whenever they play b3. And again, you never know what they have in store. And it's not like white can't get a playable position in these lines. It just seems tough to, you know, get a good position. So not too high on 2b3. And I would probably, you know, leave it as a surprise weapon and play well, the open Sicilian, the bishop b5 Sicilians, stuff like that, as your regular opening. Gotta ignore Ross Pilach, he's not a premium member, and Gustav Chatterjee is complaining about the other questions. I think <clears throat> the questions are the exact copies of questions asked sometime before. What are you gonna do? I have horrible memory so most of the time I don't realize but yeah I was wondering I think last show if mm, we had covered some already or not anyway see Hernandez oops <clears throat> now we're stuck with this picture here go away see Hernandez is saying Q about the caro Q I guess stands for question but I could be wrong and um, in the pan of attack with white, often my opponent will allow me to push c5 and I'll get a nice q side. I guess q, once again, stands for question, but I could be wrong. Question side, queen's... Um, not pawn stop. <laughs> but when they take and I'm settled with the isolani, is that how you pronounce the word? It kind of lets the wind out of my sails. What is the best way for white to play this? Also, I'm sometimes not sure how soon to push c5, depending on black's move order. Thanks, Holmes. Um, generally, if you don't like IQP positions, isolated pawn positions, the Panov is probably not the ideal weapon for you against the Karakan, because it leads to lots of those. These, the c5 push you're talking about, one only gets in very few lines, or at least a good version. So this is the pawn of c4, black goes knight f6, white goes knight to c3. As long as black hasn't committed to e6, c5 is almost never a good idea, because black can go e5 in one, one go. So that's already a problem here. If black goes knight c6, c5 doesn't work because of e5. And yeah, if white goes knight to f3, the main line is bishop to g4 where also c5 will never happen. Instead, yeah, they play some sharp stuff where black is supposed to be fine, stuff like this. And once again, c5 doesn't work. So here, the only version of c5 one could get if one, if you play the move bishop to g5, which is the other main move together with knight to f3, and black plays e6. Here c5 is a move, which, as far as I know, doesn't lead to an advantage, but it's a playable line, stuff like, this goes here, bishop b5, knight e4, and you know, the game continues. But at least here, yeah, yeah, you can dream of pushing up the queen's side pawns. The problem is it's only yeah, one out of many lines, and in this position after bishop g5, for example, d takes c4, is a very serious move. 
when yeah, once again you're stuck with the IQP after bishop c4. It's risky for black to take, but he can play h6 followed by e6 or e6 directly. Even takes is not bad, don't get me wrong, just trying to paint the overall picture here. So against knight c6, it's very hard to get this c5 push, except for one line. Mm, the one line where you can get it is here after e6. The main move is knight to f3, but then they normally play bishop b4, and c5 is no longer good, I guess, with this bishop already out of the pawn chain. So if you want these c5 structures, this is your chance to push the pawn here. I have to admit, I don't really know the theory. I think black's supposed to be all right after bishop e7, knight of three castles. But once again, you can dream of. Bishop d3 is probably wrong because you run into b6 followed by c5. Typical topic in these positions. Ideally, white wants to be ready to play a3 and keep his pawn chain, which here we cannot do because the rook is saying. So I guess instead of bishop d3, they play a move like bishop to f4, intending to go b6, b4, a5, a3, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, after e6, yeah, here, this is the one line where you can hope to get the structure. Even though, as far as I know, black is supposed to be fine here as well. And e6 is not as popular, at least in my household, as knight to c6. Well, again, setups with g6, once again, c5 is not very tempting because black will go for a quick e5 in the center. So long story short, you can't get the, your c5 structure very often against the panov. And if you play the panov, you will have to live with the isolated pawn and with strange structures like that many a time. If that's not your cup of tea, then it's probably safer to play whatever. What do they call this? The Fisher system? Stuff like this, which we've covered in one of the previous episodes. It's a fairly safe system for white, where you don't have to know that much. Try to get your pieces out and, you know, checkmate them without any structural deficits. Mm. So maybe, yeah, have a look at that one if you're struggling with the pawn off, because in the pawn off, there's plan to put the pawn on c5 and push the pawns up the queens, up the queen side. Oh, maybe it's not questions. It's hard to realize. Thanks for the question, C. Hernandez. Capital punishment. He is saying, hi Jan, I'm considering switching to 1e4. So I'm looking for an opening to play against 1e5. I've looked at the options and the Ponziani. Is that how you pronounce it in English? Ponziani? I guess it's Italian, so who cares? Ponziani appeals to me. Yeah, I know, the Ponziani. What am I missing? I don't know what you're missing. What are you not missing? You should have mentioned why the Ponziani appeals to you. What do you like about that move? The Ponziani, as far as I know, is the move 3c3 in the position where most people play the move bishop to b5 or c4 or knight to c3 or d4 you know developing pieces and so on. ponziani is not an illogical move you're trying to build a perfect pawn center when if yeah black passed i don't know g6 d4 e d c d you'd get a great position but it doesn't really happen in practice all that much, does it? So I'm not quite sure what you liked about it. As for the theory part, I believe in this, in the Antirlis book, play, play e4, e5, I think it's called, he gave this line. So knight f6 is one of the two big moves. d4, knight takes e4, t5, when after knight e7 or knight b8, black is solid, but the game seems quite playable, but this bishop c5 is a very forcing line. Which I don't think why is worse, and it leads to sort of interesting complications at least. But it's something you have to be very aware of when you play the Ponziani. And as far as I know, why is not better either. It's a mess. Mm -hmm. So that's one line. Then I'm also not quite sure what I can hope for after d5. Bishop b5, as far as I know, doesn't work. d, e, knight, e5, and queen to d5 or queen to g5 are both good for black. And queen a4, the move they normally play, gives black a couple options, including 
knight f6, knight e5, bishop d6, so the sharp gambit, bishop d7, e d, knight d4, another sharp gambit, is that sharp? Less sharp gambit. My favorite move, f6, just, you know, defending the e5 pawn, playing to get some pieces out when, I don't know why, why it would be better. So long story short, I don't see a lot of upside in the Ponziani. Therefore, I would prefer, you know, developing the bishop or the knight, even though I'm aware that those might carry less surprise value than the pawns. I'm trying to think of a good Pons Ponziani scheme joke, but I get nothing. Nah, it's not a, it's not a scheme. It's not that great. So I wouldn't do it, capital punishment, but it's not what good things can I say. Why it's probably not worse. And maybe as a surprise weapon, you will catch some people off guard. The problem is that the natural moves knight f6 and d5 both work. So I'm not sure how much theory black really has to know there. But yeah, I'm not sure if that's, if you're ready for all these lines, then by all means do it. Maybe those were the lines that you were missing. Then don't necessarily do it. Um, who else? Kimate? Wimat? Kimat. That's our friend from France, I believe. Kimat. We. Oui. <laughs> that's, that's the extent of my French. Kimat is saying, hi Jan, and thank you for the excellent job. I have a question about Magnus Carlsen. Who else? I don't know. Any chess opening maybe? <laughs> He is world champion for many years now. Time to sum up his production. Is it time to sum it up? He's like, what, how old is he, 27? And what did he bring to the opening theory? I know that he's looking for a player position, nothing more, blah, blah, blah. And he works more on openings than everybody says. Both, all right. That's not my point. If he wasn't interested in openings, he wouldn't take a big genius like you in his world champion team. Thanks for the flattery. That always works. Which openings did he radically change? Which ones did he study and played in a revolutionary fashion? Many thanks. I don't know. I don't really think of openings that he radically changed. To me, it's more, yeah, the approach to the opening that he, I'm not sure if it was him alone, but that this generation has changed a bit with, yeah, of course, I'm not sure if they're all the same generation, but yeah, you could include guys like Caruana and Nakamura there as well, to the extent that these guys and Magnus um, especially are a lot more flexible in the opening than the generation before them, than the Vichys and Kramniks used to be, while giving up a bit of maybe um, not so much detailed knowledge, but not having yeah, one set repertoire, which they will stick to and know very deeply, especially with white. I think Magnus is capable or has been playing kind of everything very at a very, very high level. While before we used to think of Anand as an E4 player, Kramnik as a D4 player. And I'm aware these distinctions are no longer valid nowadays, but I think that's sort of because of this new generation that has, yeah, shown you can play everything and be successful with it. Maybe some, somewhat introducing a more practical approach that if you surprise your opponent, that is more valuable than having studied the position that you will get on the board extensively if your opponent has studied it extensively as well, because you do it all the time. And to me, that's more, yeah, when I think of Magnus, I think more of the flexibility than of any particular opening. Like, of course, he's introduced ideas in many openings, and I don't think he's weak in the opening. And yeah, whatever. The Briar, the Berlin, his e4, e5 is black. And um, <clears throat> the... <sighs> trying to figure out to think of a line with white, but he's fairly, he's fairly classical when it comes to <clears throat> being flexible. He's still sort of playing main lines. He doesn't really, he hasn't popularized the King's Gambit or anything. It's still the 
<coughs> Queen's Gambit, the Nimzo Indian, the Italian, the yeah, not the Spanish and so on, like main lines that he's been playing with white. Maybe this bishop b5 check in the Sicilian these structures. I'm not sure if he's popularized those, but he's yeah, sort of made it a little more respectable. I think the Rosolimo, which used to be thought of more as a drawing weapon, but yeah, he's shown that these structures one can certainly play for a win. Um, but yeah, no, no particular opening comes to mind. Scandinavian, not really, right? So I think, yeah, it's more the approach to openings, the attempt to surprise the opponent and play the opponent a little more instead of playing the engine or the existing chess theory that is his legacy and not the Stonewall Dutch. That's an opening he's playing once in a while. Or any particular opening where he's radically changed the plans. I don't think that's what he's about, but he's, yeah, about using the existing chess knowledge. Um, but being able to play the whole spectrum and thereby surprising his opponent and making his opponents uncomfortable instead of, you know, trying to reinvent deep concepts in those openings. Mm, not sure that's the answer you're looking for, but that's what I think of when it comes to Magnus' opening style. Paulonio, he's saying, Hello Jan, you're an expert in openings and moreover you're making the best commentating duet with Peter. There is one thing that we have in common. We both love martial attack. Um, oh, thank you, I should say. I think that without martial attack, the whole rule up is, is making no sense, or in general, chess is making no sense. That's a strong statement. More to the point, as you probably suspect, I have a question about one line in martial attack. Well, after that intro, yeah, there was a bit of a giveaway. With my friend from club. We were playing a lot of games with 12d4, but at some point she decided that playing 12d3 would be safer for her. Is this a humble brag that you have a female chess friend? Um, and after watching your videos and playing some games, all our games more or less follow this line. e4, e5, knight f3, we should put it on the board. This is 30 moves. Um, I've seen this position. This is indeed one of the beauties of space barring in one line of the Marshall that I'm also playing. Well, yeah, you get this position and it's a draw with careful play indeed. Um, so my question is, by the way, after watching your videos and playing some games, all our games more or less follow this line. Why does your friend continue playing this drawn line with white? Is that exciting? You get this position like 30 times making a draw? Um, anyway, and with careful play it has to be draw. So my question is, where in this line can I find some way to fight for a win? As black, of course. What do you suggest? Or if I'm playing martial attack with black, I've already agreed the game can end with a draw. Thank you in advance. There is some truth to that, uh, that yeah, in the martial, of course, if you analyze it deeply, most of the long, sharp main lines, black is not really pressing for a win, but he's trying to hold the game, which one could argue is the case in every major opening that in the sharp main lines, it's rarely black pushing for a win. But the marshal, of course, is very forcing. So it's not easy to, you know, just give an alternative where we keep pieces on the board and see what happens because we are sacrificing a pawn and are trying to force the issue. And this 12d3, as mentioned, has been a very, very solid line for white and by far the most popular line at the top level. So it's not like black can easily force anything here. I can tell you what the alternatives are. One alternative is queen h4 instead of bishop h5. The drawback is g3, queen h3, rook to e4, intending rook h4. But of course, one can always play a position like this and, you know, make some moves here. Queen f5, let's say knight d2, queen g6, intending to maybe push the f-pawn, maybe get the bishop out. Computer-wise, this might not be 100% sound, but it's not a bad line either. And why does to know what he's doing? Like. Play can get extremely sharp here very quickly. And I'm sure for a game or two, or as a surprise weapon, this queen h4, which no one ever plays, is not hopeless. Other alternatives after what is supposed to be the best move, mission f5, queen f3. The line you gave, by the way, I should put it on the board briefly, is this stuff, where after bishop g6, the attempt to play for a win with white is g3, 
when yeah the theoretical debates continue endlessly after b4 but yeah after h3 white yeah black doesn't really have anything better than this forcing line which does lead to a draw mm. and yeah if you both know this it might take a bit of the excitement out of the game if you play it every time indeed even though yeah normally the onus is on is on white to try something else, I would say. But of course, if we want to play for a win with black, I agree, this might not be the ideal territory if the surprise value is zero. I've played this, I've won this rookie eight line twice, but both times I was counting on some surprise value. So, where to deviate? In this position, after queen f3, there's many alternatives. The best move, or the, the best move, I shouldn't say, the most popular move at the highest level is this queen h4, g3, queen h3 here. When the current fashion is bishop e3, bishop d3, knight d2. It's also not easy to win with black, frankly. Normally it's some end game where black has to make three, four precise moves in order to equalize here after bishop d4 and now rook f8 or rook f8 are both being disputed. Black normally holds. <clears throat> There's also the move bishop g6, which is not a bad move. Well, it's once again, not clear how white should try to play for a win. Knight a3, I thought was the most critical. So. None of these lines gives black an advantage because we're playing a sharp forcing mainline opening where, you know, white can force a draw if he knows everything very well. Or force a draw maybe not, but hold a draw. It's not like black is pushing. Therefore, as much as I hate to admit it, if you want a board full of pieces, maybe t6. I'd never do it. Um, but yeah, it's tough to say in the marshal, play this line. And you'll be better. I've given some of the lines where you're taking more risks, but there's also more reward, reward especially this line. I don't know, against an unprepared opponent. This is tricky. Queen here, pawn up, push the pawn. This is maybe more in the martial spirit. The problem is that these humorless computers, if you spend more time, like they might ask some questions for one. But it's not a bad surprise weapon at all. So good luck playing Marshall games against your friend Paulonio. Then we have Mr. Tomek, 188. Hi Jan. You often say that people have to avoid this line. E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Knight C3, Knight F6. And the white gets a better version of the Rosolimo after 4, Bishop B5. Yeah, I'm not sure I've used these words, but I've certainly pointed out that sentiment. Is there some specific reason why the move order why this move order is that bad? I played it a lot with good results, of course, against people of my own strength. 2000. Thank you for those great shows. Thanks, Tomek. Now, it would have helped if you had told me which move you want to play after 4 bishop b5 with good results or with whatever results, because of course black has some choices there. But the general consensus, I believe, is that in the position after knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6 is a little tricky for black to play because of bishop b5, which is why many players play a different move here, e6, e5, g6, d6, depending on your black repertoire, really. So knight to f6, bishop to b5, of course, d4 transposes to the Sveshnikov or the what do you call this, Richter, Rouser, mm, or whatever you want to play here. But bishop b5 is the way to make black a little uncomfortable. And it's a different position than this position as well. Here after, let's say, g6, g6, e6, and d6 are the main moves, but especially after g6, for comparison's sake, castles bishop g7. We didn't put the knight on f6 so early, so it's a little more flexible. So knight c3, knight f6, bishop b5, and yeah, black has many moves, but none that I thought was that appealing. d6 runs into e5, that's probably best avoided. Knight to d4 is a move, and e5 is once again pretty testing. Knight takes b5, knight takes b5, knight to d5. Here white has a couple of moves. There. Most funky looking is knight to g5, intending queen f3, queen f7, checkmate. I think there were also quieter moves like queen e2, intending a6, knight d6, check. That give white 
some hope at least, or a bit of an edge in my opinion. So knight d4, I'm not sure if it works. Queen c7 is a logical move. <clears throat> when white castles. And here, yeah, with the queen committed to c7, black once again has to be very careful to make it out of the opening. There's alternatives in this position as well, but the main line is something like knight d4, rook e1, a6, bishop f1. I think white is better. There's this. This more a gambit trick, knight g4, intending to give checkmate on h2, knight f3, followed by queen h2, but just g3, takes, takes, knight here, queen e2, then you know what, b3, bishop b2, it's it's a tricky position for black. So once again, yeah, it would have been useful if you had let me know which move you want to play after bishop b5. Um, then I can give more feedback there. Best I can, I'm aware of, is the move g6 here anyway, which that's what I was talking about earlier. We've committed this knight to f6 already, which is not ideal, but I'm not sure how bad this position is for black. There's this line e5, knight to g4. Typically they take here, d takes c. The knight tries to come back into play via h6, f5. h3, knight h6. g4 is possible, but I'm not so sure if it's great. And after knight e4. B6, I think this is how they play. I guess white is a little to be preferred, but it's a complicated position. So maybe this G6 is an option, but I'd still rather avoid it. That's, yeah, the extent of my knowledge. Why typically instead of knight F6, they play E5, leading to very different structures, or G6 if they're cool with transposing to some version of the dragon or d6 if they're okay with transposing to well the rouser but yeah <laughs> i'm not here to argue if it's been working for you and if you're not discouraged by the lines i've been giving then keep going there am i not here to argue maybe best of luck tomic 188 trouble is that how I'm supposed to read it? TR3B1L? Is that trouble? Hmm. I hope he's not asking for trouble, even though that line sort of is asking for trouble. Hi, Jan. How bad is the Lego Gambit? D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, 3, F3, E5. Is it playable or is black close to lost? And what are the best lines for white? No, it's bad. Like. Laker played it at some point in the 90s, but I think he himself, when we were doing commentary in Baden Baden, mentioned that it's not really working for black. And yeah, don't do it. I will even tell you why. One d4, knight f6, c4, g6, f3. Always a popular line, people don't know what to do against the Grunfeld, so f3 is a bit of a shortcut. When d5 remains playable, but there is no knight to be exchanged on c3. Therefore, these positions are very different from your regular Grunfels. I think we have a later question about this move, which is playable. So black can also go bishop g7, of course, but then he has to be ready to transpose to at least some version of the Zamish King Zidian, which is not everybody's cup of tea, especially if you're normally a Grunfeld player. There's more alternatives. C5 recently has been popular, transposing to Benoni-esque positions. E6 is a move as well. Keeping the options open to go C5 or D5 next. So black is not exactly <clears throat> without options here. However, E5 is not a great option in this position. And the problem is after d takes e5, knight h5, tending to give a check here. The move knight to h3 is just too good. And there's, as far as I know, and as far as my engine tells me more importantly, no satisfactory light for black. Queen h4 check, white goes knight to f2, and taking this pawn just loses too much time. After knight to c3, the combination of this knight on the rim that can be kicked with g4 eventually and white just developing very quickly 
is too much to handle. Bishop b4, bishop d2. Black is very close to lost already. Because his pieces just don't work well together. So queen h4 check shouldn't be done, I guess. The best try is knight to c6 here, taking this pawn. But then another quote unquote modern technique, just giving the pawn back is very effective. Bishop g5, bishop e7, takes, queen takes. And knight to c3. And white is just better here. It's a good structure for white. Controlling the d5 square. The knights on the rim don't exactly cancel each other out. The black knight on the rim, I think, is a little dimmer. Even though it might make it back to f6 soon. Queen e5, for example, g4, knight f6, queen d2. Why is just seriously better here? It's a much better structure. You can push these pawns. You can grab space wherever you want. It's not a playable position for black. Therefore, don't do it. I understand this position at first sight doesn't look so bad, but trust me, it is pretty bad. It's g5, and putting a knight on d5 is a fairly nasty plan many a time. And yeah, what can I say? It's bad, and people know it's bad. So it's, yeah, nothing you want to play with black. And something you want to hope for with white, but at a high level, this line has stopped existing because of this knight h3 move. So, don't do it. Thanks. TR3B1L for the question. Then we have Prison Mike. Prison Mike is saying, Hi Jan, I used to play the French defense with good results at my level, but stopped playing it because lower rated opponents play the exchange variation a lot. Do they? E4, E6, D4, D5, 3, E takes D5. And the game is boring and not so easy to win. Do you have a good line for black? Thanks, Prism Mike. Isn't it funny that in these clinics, I barely ever get the question. Hi Jan, I used to play the French defense, but I did manage to equalize against higher rated opponents. So what can I do? No one's concerned with yeah, getting a disposition against strong opponents, but everyone's always very concerned with we gotta bully the weaker players. We can't play the Slav. There's the exchange Slav. We can't play the French. There's the exchange Blanche. Hang on, I wanna play d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, but I struggle to get a winning position against the Catalan. Which I understand is a problem. I'm just find it interesting that people are much more worried with beating up on lower rated opponents than getting decent positions against players of the same strength or higher rated opponents. Not a criticism, it's just curious. And yeah, many people, me included, have had to have different repertoires to face low right opponents. Like we had this question earlier where about the main line in the Marshall, which yeah, ends up being very, very George. So I can't play that in Bundesliga board eight every game. Um and so the phenomenon exists when it comes to the French. I'm not, first of all, I'm not sure if lower rated opponents, I'm not sure what that means in Prison Mike's case, if they really are that keen to play the exchange. And once they do, this is coming from someone who's never played the French in his life and who has played E4 maybe five times. So. As usual, with French or Sicilian, but especially French questions, eh, take it with a grain of salt. As far as I know, after E, D, E, D, they normally play knight to F3. And the way to get a more double-edged position here is knight to c6. Knight f6 or bishop d6 are the main equalizing tries. But knight c6, bishop d3, intending to go bishop g4, then queen d7, bishop d6. Knight e7 is, I guess, your best bet for a more complicated game and positions with, how do they call this, opposite castles. Once again, not sure if this is objectively the best line, but maybe against them wikis, it's a good choice. Of course, white can do other things as well. He can start with bishop to d3, when I guess knight c6 is still a legal option. You could also try c5 here, opting for, once again, a very unbalanced structure. White takes, bishop takes. Now, at least, the game won't be that boring. You develop the pieces, you have the IQP. 
but active pieces. Generally, of course, the structure is sort of defined, but there's still how many? 30 pieces on the board that can do many different things. So I wouldn't be too worried. I think this is, yeah, a more unbalanced position than, let's say, the exchange slav. And even there, I normally argue that it's playable for black. However, I don't disagree with the notion that if you play the knight off, let's say, it will be somewhat tougher for your opponents to reach a roughly symmetrical position. And obviously, the French does allow the white player to get a symmetrical position with the right to move after three moves. So, that's built in there. <clears throat> Still, I'm normally a proponent of saying, even if you play knight f6 here, bishop d3, bishop d6, it won't be impossible to generate chances against a lower rated opponent, because, you know, pieces. And if you consistently make better moves than them, you should be doing all right. Mm. So, sorry, Prism Mike, I don't have a way to in advantage in that position. I think it's just making moves. But yeah, there's knight c6 intending to go, bishop d6, bishop out to g4, queen d7, long castles, maybe. Is a way to spice it up. Illuminatus92 is saying, Hello Jan, I recently became a premium member largely thanks to the amazing content you put out. Thank you, thank you. In addition, of course, to all the great video series of Chess24. Thank you. Check out my new series on how to deal with 1 knight f3, 1 c4, 1 g3 as black. I'm trying to complete, more or less complete, our black repertoire against 1 d4. If there are still holes in their repertoire, which sort of will always be there because the video series format. I'm trying to cover most of the sensible lines, but I never managed to cover everything. Then, by all means, ask me in this opening clinic in the next epi next edition, season 21, which I think will start in two weeks from now. And I'll let you know. Anyway, sorry for <clears throat> drifting off topic. One little suggestion I have is that C24 provide more time controls with increments such as 5 plus 3 or 5 plus 5. I'll pass it on. I'm not sure how big the pool would be, but yeah, it's, it's a topic we hear sometimes. I think if you challenge an opponent, you can do it. I don't really know stuff. Um, anyway, I'll pass it on. Back to the topic. I would like your help against the Karakan. If black castles on queen side and not king side, I really struggle to find a constructive plan. Typical position I reach is the following e4, c6, d4, d5, knight c3, d4, 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 knight bishop f5. Long line, I'll put it on the board. The computer gives a nice edge, minus 0 0.5, I think plus 0 0.5. Normally, minus means black is better, plus means white is better. And I guess white is better there. But how can it be materialized? What should I aim to do? In general, this kind of positions where you're supposed to have an edge, but the opponent doesn't have any real weaknesses, are very confusing to me. So I hope I can gain a new perspective from your thoughts. You're in for a bit of disappointment, I'm afraid. Um, thanks for all your great work. Best wishes, Harris. Thanks, Harris. Let's put it on the board. I'd still exchange French on the board. So E4. Mm -hmm. C6. See, my hand wants to play E5. It's not what we're talking about here. Knight c3, d e, knight e4, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6, knight f3, knight d7, h5, bishop h7, bishop d3, takes, takes, e6, bishop d2, and queen to c7. Bit of a forgotten line. This position we have on the board, I think, is extremely popular, especially at slightly Lower levels, or not that low levels, of course, you already have to know a lot of theory to get here, but yeah, that's at clubbish level, because at the Grandmaster level nowadays, I think they're more into 3e5. Of course, there's games with knight c3 there as well, but e5 has replaced knight to c3 as the move at the highest level. But it's not so much because of this queen to c7, but more because of these knight f6 long castles, bishop e7 setups, I believe, where um, 
white has been struggling a bit to come up with something. And there's also the line with knight f3, e6 instead of knight to d7, which people have been quite successful as black with as well. Anyway, back to the topic. Bishop d2, queen c7. Yeah, this is a very old planet. Eh? Long castles followed by knight f6. I'm not aware of any refutation here or of any particular problem, but white has always been scoring well here. I think if you check the database, he scores like 64% or something, which is much higher than the usual. I don't know what white is supposed to score 54% in your average opening. 53, 54. So that's a hint, and as you've mentioned, the computer also prefers white in these positions for a reason. Now, as we know, I'm not really a big believer in this is your plan and you execute it and then you win the game. So I can't really give you a plan here. I can, of course, talk about this h5 pawn sort of cramping the black king side, fixing the pawns on h6 and g7, especially pawn on g7, might become a weakness and in an end game, one day, g4, f4, g5, or g4, f4, f5, might ask questions. But in general, theoretically speaking, g3 is the move they play here, hinting at bishop f4, covering this square. Now the best move is probably knight takes e4. Knight c5 is possible, and it's a move people like to play because it looks clever and flashy. But after knight c5, bishop c5, I think white goes c4. In general, you go c4 very often in these positions, just to take away the d5 square, and to give your own bishop a nice square on c3. Why is supposed to be better? So g3, they go knight e4, queen e4. And here, yeah, there's options, knight f6, so bishop d6 mainly. As for, yeah, what to do in abstract, why does more space? So if you get in king b1, c4, bishop c3, and then have a look around. Sometimes d5 will be an option. Sometimes knight e5, knight takes e5, d takes e5 can be slightly unpleasant, even though that's tricky. Um, sometimes, whatever, it's, <clears throat> I struggle with these things. I really don't know. I'm such a move by move player. So knight f6, there's a move. Queen e2, go back. Queen is at, under attack. Bishop d6, what they normally play here. c4, best move. Often intending to go pawn to c5. For example, king b8, bit of a mistake. Because of c5, bishop e7, bishop f4, or even. Less drastic example, a6 c5 also very very good for white all of a sudden the black position falls apart knight to e5 so after c4 black typically has to go c5 well queen e7 is a move but it's not great c5 and here bishop to c3 is what they do c takes d4 knight takes d4 threatening knight to b5 therefore black goes a6 white goes king b1 and white is a little better more space more options slightly safer king Mm, I'm sure there's more theory. Rook d7, attending rook h d8. But once again, white has a bit of a pull here. Rook c1, hinting at c5s. King b8, knight b3, hinting at bishop a5 or at c5. Queen c6, rook h4. You can say black has to be careful. It's tenable, and I think I've made decent moves for black. But it's not that satisfying to play, and that's big reason why they've more or less given up playing these positions, but it's not like they're lost. So bishop d6 is a legal move as well, but once again white goes c4, black has to go c5, this looming c5 bishop f4 is always unpleasant. And after c5 bishop c3, white is typically better. I could maybe also give a speech about that the white three versus two majority is more mobile than the black four versus three because of the cramping pawn on h5. But I'm more into tricks like cd knight d4. Queen c4 doesn't work because of knight b5. Oh no, knight f5, sorry. Don't go knight b5. Knight f5, queen e4, knight d6. Boom, we win. Mm. So instead of queen c4, black should play a6 once again to stop knight b5. King b1. And we have our tiny pull again. Where are you? Black is solid. Why is it has a space advantage? I think, yeah, if you tried playing these positions with black, you would start appreciating that. Eh, they're not that great. And they do have reasons for playing the alternatives I mentioned earlier with. Knight f6 followed by bishop e7 and short castles when these c5s are all of a sudden lead to much sharper positions if the black king is not here. But black can maybe put a rook here, attack the white king. 
or the other line I mentioned with the early E6. So sorry, yeah, I don't have a winning plan there, but go C4, force black to play C5, grab some space, and typically you'll be slightly better. Like there are very solid grandmasters that play the line with black, it's not losing as I said. But I do believe there's reasons, it's out of fashion, and computers like it for why. So I hope that helped you, Illuminatus 92. What do we do? Do we do one more question? I think one more question is fine. And we do have Mr. Or uh, maybe two more. I don't know when I started. I should try to make it an hour. But in order to do that, I should check the clock when I start. Very tough. Let's do two more. Samurai29. He's saying, Hi Jan, what are your opinions on d4, knight f6, c4, g6, f3, knight c6? Ah, we talked about that just a minute ago. Do you think that white has any kind of edge here? Or is this a valid way for black to equalize and get an interesting game? Mm, can I say neither? I think it's a playable line. I'm not sure if it equalizes or if white has an edge, but most main lines are sort of in the middle of that. So let's put it on the board. <clears throat> 1 d4, knight f6, c4, g6, f3. We just talked about e5 not being great and at the highest level currently they're very much into all kinds of Benonis here with c5 and e6. But there is the move knight to c6, which I've always liked aesthetically. The point is if white goes knight to c3, black goes d5, and we get back into sort of Grunfeld territory where we say, okay, my knight on c6 might not be ideal, but your pawn on f3 isn't either after the exchange of knights. How does this go? They go e5 here. And as far as I know, this is fine for black. Bishop b5, bishop d7. Supposed to be very playable with black. Well, if white says, okay, I understand you want to go d5 after knight c3, I'll start with e4. Then black goes e5. I'm saying, haha, you weaken the d4 square. And this is also supposed to be perfectly fine for black. Knight goes to d4, bishop comes to c5, followed by d6, and so on. So the question when it comes to the fight for an opening advantage or equality and so on, is the move d5 here. This is the main line by far these days, knight to e5, e4. And I think, yeah, it's somewhere in the middle. I believe currently black players are avoiding this, but I'm not sure there's a clear path for white to an advantage. d6, I think the main line is something like knight c3, bishop g7, f4, knight goes back to d7. And here white has this clever move. It's not forced, but it's very clever. Knight to h3, as long as the knight is blocking this diagonal. This knight wants to go to f2, trying to support the e4 pawn for later. And yeah, this is the position where black has been struggling a little bit to come up with a satisfying plan. I think castles bishop to e2, and they haven't done very well with e5 or e6 here. So currently the discussions were about knight to c5, knight to f2, and now e6. Which I'm not sure, frankly. I think it's an interesting position, but white has chances for an opening advantage after hmm, castles e, d, c, d, rook e8, let's say, bishop f3, c6, or after d takes e6 f takes e6, which is a very complicated structure. I have a feeling black has been shying away from this, but I'm not sure how bad it really is. So it depends very much on your read of this. I think there was a recent game, Nair against somebody, I copied it, <laughs> um, where white played something very sharp, like queen c2 and then long castles. With, yeah, becomes extremely, extremely messy. No, oh, sorry, it's here. <laughs> Queen c2, bishop b7, long castles. Chaos. My computer says it's <clears throat> somewhat playable for white, but no, somewhat playable for black, but I haven't spent enough time to give you an accurate answer if it's um, equal or good for white. These are just, you know, the current battlefields in this line, as far as I know. And I think the yeah 
trend at the highest level is to not play this knight c6 move, but instead to either discuss one of the many d5 lines here. Um, <clears throat> this stuff. And now queen to d6 or pawn to f5, you know, this six stuff. Or to, as I mentioned, go for this Benoni, that's at least MVL, for example, has been often going for these positions, trying to get a sharp game here. But I'm not aware of any particular problem with knight to f3, f3 knight to c6. So I wouldn't be too surprised if it came back. Hope that answers your question. Samurai. 29. And yeah, I wouldn't give up on the move if you like it. Chi Lucky is saying. That's the last question for today's show. Hi Jan, what do you recommend as white in the 3 bishop e7 line of the Queen's Gambit declined? Exchange variation. d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop e7, c, d, e, d, bishop f4, c6, e3. So, what's your question? Um, what I recommend as white after e3 and the black moves, or if I endorse this line for white. I'm interested to know your thoughts about black's main moves in this position. Bishop f5, knight f6, and bishop d6. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I've played that position. I normally, I guess I wouldn't go cd5, even though it's the most principled move. But in practice, yeah, I've been messing around here with, I think, bishop f4 or something I've been doing, knight f6, e3. Or sometimes I just transpose to this position and now play bishop f4 or bishop g5 or queen c2 or whatever dumb move crosses my mind. But the principal test is, of course, c, d, e, d, bishop f4. Arguing my bishop is better in this Kalsbach structure on f4 than on g5 anyway. So I don't really care that he stopped me from cd, ed, bishop to g5 by starting with bishop e7. There's two main moves. With black I've played knight f6 here once or twice, not c6. So c6 I don't have much experience with, but it's not the first time I see this position either. So c6, e3. The main move, and I think the one they pl mainly play at the highest level, is bishop to f5, which is very principled in general in these queen's gambits. The, Theory is always, if white manages to develop bishop d3, knight e2, without black being able to get his bishop out or to maybe exchange this bishop, then white is typically better. Well, if black can develop this bishop without repercussions, is that the word? Without trouble. Mm -hmm. Then he's okay. And after bishop f5, yeah, there's many discussions. Kremnik recently put pressure on Wesley, so was in the candidates. After queen b3, queen b6, oh no, sorry, 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 after g4. This is the main move, bishop e6. And here the main move used to be h4. But Kramnik went for queen b3, queen b6, and f3, I believe. And he managed to put pressure on so in this endgame, which was yeah, a new concept and very interesting. I haven't studied in, it in much depth, but why it was in need of a fresh idea. Because if you go h4, which is sort of the traditional move here, tending to grab space on the king side. The argument was always black can't take because of queen b3 now and he has to weaken his queen side which is bad news or he's gonna end up in trouble. But Wesley so sort of fixed his line for black and I think he found some forced draw here with g5, bishop e5, f6, bishop h2, bishop g4, queen b7, queen e7 was the key move offering the exchange of queens. If you take black is fine so queen a8 and queen e3, bishop e2. This is, I believe, some game. I forgot. Ding Liren against Wesley So? I think so. Queen b8, king f7. And it ends in a perpetual after some further adventures. Even though not that many further adventures, I guess. Queen f3. Anyway, it's a long computer redraw, which meant that White had to look for a fresh idea. So maybe this g4, queen b3, as Kramnik did, is the way to go. There's also these slower setups with knight e2, knight g3, but black's supposed to be all right there. <clears throat> so I've always considered bishop to f5 the main battleground, and currently the main question there is this Kremnik plan, this g4, bishop e6, queen b3, queen b6, f3. This endgame, which looks sort of innocuous, but he posed some problems against so 
And it seemed like the players at the press conference also agreed that this was a very serious attempt for white. So that's bishop f5 for here once again. I think g4 is the main move. And the alternatives, what do you mention? Bishop d6, that's always been around. It's a very solid line. I'm not sure if white has much here, but I'd take white. Takes, takes, bishop d3. The plan for black is typically to play knight e7 to hint at bishop f5. White plays queen c2. I sort of like the move queen b1 because it's cute and it helps prepare b4. But I guess queen c2 objectively is better. And you get these positions where black normally tries to exchange the bishop over here, b6, knight f3, bishop a6, castles. This kind of stuff, which is supposed to be very close to equal. But once again, I choose white. I think the main move here is e4, but you can also just go rook fc1. Then try to double rooks on the c file. It's not much, but slightly more pleasant for white, I'd say. So that's bishop d6. Always a solid move. But yeah, I think somewhat better for white, which also looks logical because the bishop did lose a tempo to get to that square. And then there's knight f6, which currently, there, there have been some games MVL played it, I believe. Normally the thinking was knight f6 is not very challenging, because if white manages to get, you know, bishop d3, let's say castles, h3, knight b7, knight f3, this kind of position, he's going to be a happy camper. He goes queen c2, and then either follows up by long castles and play on the king side, or short castles and play on the queen side. Both are supposed to be very nice positions for white. And the bishop is better on f4 here than on g5, because it often avoids knight e4 or knight h5, simplifying options that are there with the bishop here. However, they've tried to yeah, play this a little more cunningly, and they start with knight bd7. The first point is that knight f3 runs into knight h5, exchanging this bishop, which is fine for black. So white has to play h3. And now instead of castles, which transposes to what we just talked about, the plan has been to go knight to f8, hitting this bishop next move by knight to g6. And I'm not sure, I haven't checked this in any great depth, which, yeah, I guess could be the motto of every position we cover in the opening clinic. But as far as I know, it is sort of playable. Knight to g6, bishop h2, bishop d6, and knight to e5 being the critical position. But I'd still take white, and I still believe that bishop to h5, not bishop to f5, instead of knight to f6, is the main line from black's perspective. So, yeah, that's more or less where I stand without, yeah, this being my main choice as white, because as mentioned, in self c takes d5, I normally like to go either bishop f4 directly or to just transpose back to the main lines with knight f3, knight f6, depending on who the opponent is and what I had for breakfast, that kind of stuff. That's it for today's show. Thank you guys for watching. I hope we've all learned a little something. And I'll see you, I think, next week with the final episode of this installment. And then the week after that, we will reopen the floor for questions and move on to season 21 of Jan's Opening Clinic. Until then, see you guys. Thanks for watching.